Happy Monday, everybody! You're listening to the Personal Playlist Podcast, fondly referred to as the P3. I'm Noah Daniel. Music is a world within itself, with a language we all understand. I am so excited to have Hans Apple here on the Personal Playlist Podcast. Hans has worked as a counselor in the Richland School District for the past 19 years and at Enterprise Middle School since it opened. He's passionate about school culture, servant leadership, and kindness. Hans believes that education at its highest level is about helping others find and develop their joy. In 2018, EMS was awarded the ASCD Whole Child Award for the State of Washington and the Global Class Act Award for creating a culture of excellence through kindness, service, and empathy. Recently, Hans launched his own blog about school culture and rolled out a student-led leadership podcast called Award-Winning Culture, hosted by Wildcat Nation. Welcome to the show, Hans. It's awesome to be here. I'm so excited to be talking to you right now. (laughs) I'm so excited, too. For so long, you and I kept getting tagged in the same things on Twitter, and I was like, who is this guy? So I started checking (laughs) you out. I invited you on the show, and I'm happy that you're here. Oh, it's awesome. I really appreciate you inviting me. It's been amazing. Okay, well, it's just begun. Tell me a little (laughs) bit more about your work. What does your everyday look like? Yeah, so I'm a counselor uh, at a middle school, so grades six through eight. Um, And so a lot of my day is spent uh, talking and helping uh, students. Um, And so it's amazing. I I love that age. I think that's where uh, kids need all the help and resources and support they can get. Um, So there is no typical day. Usually I get asked that. Um, every day is different. And I love that. I love that the day can can turn in any direction. And uh, I just I love this particular age group. I can't imagine working at, at any other level, to be honest. I feel really similarly. I've spent about 20 years of my 24 in, in middle school. And there is something very special. It's probably in many ways, the most important time, although I think every educator says that their time is the most important time, but so many pivotal things happen and so many ways you can help them grow to be the people that they want to be and that they deserve to be. Tell me a little bit about the podcast. Yeah. So um, I guess uh, about a year and a half ago, we uh, started uh, a student-led leadership podcast um, and it's, we really were just kind of growing it as we went. We didn't really know what we were doing, um, but we had some passionate student leaders and we kind of had a, a little overarching vision of um, let's find ways to surround them with amazing leaders and uh, people that were, you know, uh, had inspiring messages to share. And so we thought, well, if we could if we could create a platform where some of our student leaders could interact with these incredible folks and then reflect on their learnings and share that out with, you know, other students and educators and parents around the country, we'd have something pretty special. And that's kind of, you know, what we've developed over the last year and a half or so. That's really exciting. And so do the leaders train new leaders? Is that the model? Yeah. So we started, we started with about 15 uh, kids And, um, we spent the first nine months or so with them. And then last spring, um, exactly our, this, that group of student leaders got to kind of train another group of leaders, um, that were brought on board for the podcasting. And so we had kind of like a retreat, uh, last spring where, you know, we had, uh, students teaching other students how to podcast and all the little specifics. And, and it was really incredible. One one of the best parts about the retreat, um, is watching, you know, other students that have, you know, now experienced uh, what it's like to do an interview and, and, you know, all the little nuances of putting together the podcast, now giving the new, you know, group of students all these suggestions and tips. And one of the probably the most impactful moments at the retreat last spring was I had reached out to a bunch of people around the country that had been listening to the podcast. And I asked them to send like a one minute, two minute video of, you know, what the podcast has meant to them. You know, what what have you thought of it? And how did, how did uh, you find it? And what do you think about the experience of listening to it kind of thing? And so we compiled all those videos into one really long video. And it was basically this, um, I don't know, just kind of like this um, celebration of love for the work that the students had done. 
So they got to sit back and listen to people from Australia and from Canada and from New York and from Oklahoma and everywhere else around the country um, share what, you know, their work, their student work had meant to them. So, you know, as you can imagine, there's tears and people are, you know, high-fiving and smiling. So it's just this really powerful moment. And along that, you have this other group of students in the room that hadn't been a part of it for the last nine months, but are now completely psyched to jump and dive into this thing, you know, called student-led podcasting. So it's it was an amazing experience. What a wonderful idea to curate that for them because it does it. It feeds into their authentic learning experiences and the beautiful work that they've done. And And leadership is something that takes years to really build. So the more you can infuse their educational experiences and really co-curricular experiences with those opportunities, the more that you've planted seeds that you've no idea where it's going to go, but really amazing things can happen from there. Absolutely. It, it, some of the growth that we've seen with some of the, the students has just been incredible. I was just talking with a girl today who's, this is her second year podcasting with us. And she had written um, a spoken word wrap all on mental health and what it's like to have some mental health struggles. And, you know, it's just this amazing piece and it's, you know, maybe three or four minutes. And so we recorded it today and, you know, there, there would have never been something on her radar at all to be able to share this, to be able to own this, to be able to, you know, put, you know, a voice to mental health and, you know, now try to get that out into other students' hands and other people that are struggling and, and, you know, needing support. So it's just been incredible, like how this, you know, one podcast leadership kind of uh, focus has now spun into these other realms. We have kids that are blogging about their experience. Um, we've had students that have uh, worked and taught, you know, other adult educators how to create a student led podcast in their district. So it's just, it's, it's just so cool. I would have never thought any of this was possible two years ago. I think it's so special, but one of the things that you do is really reflected in this is you help students voice their voice. And so podcasting is a really special way. You don't have to worry about how you look, you know, you really Absolutely. focus on voice and you learn to listen. And it's a, it's a really, it's a special medium. And um, speaking of podcasts in this podcast, um, <laughs> my guests bring me three songs, one that's nostalgic, one that reflects your identity and one that picks you up, lifts you up, inspires or motivates. Tell me a little bit about the process of preparing for the show. So to be honest, I thought it was going to be pretty easy. Like I, I would just like, oh, I'll just pick a couple songs. No big deal. Um, but as I started kind of digging through my own playlist and looking at other people's playlists, it really became this like fun uh, wormhole that I just sort of crawled into that was like, okay, let's see. Well, if I include this song, then I'm going to miss out on this other song. So the process was really fun. Each song, I kind of had a different experience finding it and, and which one I wanted to go with, but it, it's super enjoyable process. I'm really glad that you made it, you know, a fun wormhole because for some yeah. people it can be a challenge, but I'm glad it wasn't a place you had to crawl out of, but a place you enjoy, <laughs> enjoyed wiggling through. So exactly. let's begin with your nostalgic song. How come that is the song that you chose to reflect your past or your throwback? Yeah, so huge Green Day fan, um, first and foremost. Um, that song came out right at the tail end of high school for me. Um, it's my wife's favorite band, Green Day. We actually met in high school. We're high school sweethearts. Aww. Um, and so when I look back at this song, this was actually used, um, for our video yearbook. So for my senior year. Wow. So like the song just, you know, I think I love Green Day anyways, but this specific song kind of resonates with a period of my life where, okay, I met somebody that's super important to me, right? I go off to college and kind of discovering who I am. And it just kind of brings me back to all of that. So time of your life. So it's funny because this song is a departure from their regular music. So anybody that really loves Absolutely. Green Day, <laughs> I think we're really surprised. And I know that when when they, they had actually written this, Billy Joe wrote this while um, Dookie was coming out, but they held it back for Nimrod because it didn't fit. And people bought Nimrod thinking that the whole album, because this song really hit, that the whole album was going to be <laughs> like this. And they were like, man, this is a punk band. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> it's, it's such a great song. I've heard it at a lot of graduations. And it's funny because a lot of people think the song is Time of Your Life, but it's really called Good Riddance. And there's this like mm-hmm. undertone of this anger, but this acceptance. And I think that the reality is that, you know, whether you're going through middle school and graduating grade eight or you're graduating to go on to college or university, they're really pivotal mm-hmm. moments. And it's great to be able to capture all of that, so much of that in a single song. Let's play it. Green Day, good riddance. (laughs) Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life So take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life Tattoos of memories. That's such a good, you know, term when you're talking about a throwback song or a song that's nostalgic. There are so many tattoos of memories and it's very special that you married your high school sweetheart. (laughs) That must just add the sweetness to this song and all of those memories. Absolutely. It just kind of takes me right back to those high school, like late high school, college days. So it's a pretty special time. Okay. So your identity song is a bit of a a different experience. When this song came out, it had something to do with League of Legends. Is that your foray into the music? What does it tell about you? Not really. No, it, it has nothing to do with that. It's just more, um, when I think of Warriors uh, by Imagine Dragons, I I think of educators. I really feel like we are on the front lines. And, you know, it talks about, um, you know, that, we're building this town. And that's kind of how I see education is, um, you know, we're at the forefront of doing the most important work. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't know too many people that are in education that don't feel like this is a calling. Not too many people just kind of stumble into it. Um, I think most people that, that I'm around, it seems like this is their passion. And, um, you know, I do feel like, you know, as educators, we are, um, you know, kind of battle tested in that way. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of trials and tribulations, um, but the work that we're doing is super important. And this song just really hits home for me. That's so cool, actually. And it's funny because the connotation of warrior is like, you know, bruised, but embattled, but always, you know, persevering and that idea that educators mm-hmm. in their calling, they just, they always find a way and it might not be on the same day that they need to, and it might be a long battle, but the triumph is in some of the little steps. It's not necessarily the war, but it's the everyday experiences. That's so interesting. I've never thought of it that way, but I'm going to, while we play your song by Imagine Dragons, Warrior. As a child, you would wait and watch from far away. But you always knew that you'd be the one to work while they all play. And you, you'd lay awake at night and scheme of all the things that 
you would change, but it was just a dream. As I'm listening to your identity song, I think about the reality that we do. We rise above circumstance. We rise above legislation. We rise above external impositions on our work. And we we persevere to do what's right for kids most of the time. And the other thing it made me think about when you were talking about building this town in the lyric, it's back to your whole climate aspect and kindness. So much mm-hmm. of the work That's comes right. from the unity of the staff being on the same page and being the warriors for the kids to find ways to build culture for them, around them, through them, and and let them be a part of that equation. No, I love that. The song feels so much about grit, right? And that's kind of what you're alluding to with the perseverance. And it just, it, it just fires me up to be a, an educator when I hear that song. I really, I have a whole new take on the song. I'm so happy. I, yes. <laughs> I, I can't put my war paint on before I go to school tomorrow because I feel proud. Awesome. And this is, this is something worth fighting for always. I really love it. But this isn't your pick me up song, although it feels like one. So when you right. were thinking about a song that right. inspired you, how did you come to this last song? Yeah. So, um, this was hard because there's a lot of different ways to go in a lot of different directions. I wasn't sure if I was thinking like, is this a workout music song? Is this like, you know, there, I feel like there's 50 different songs I could have chosen for pump me up, you know, inspirational type thing. But the one I chose was uh, the story by Brandy Carlisle. And this song really speaks to me because I really feel like as a counselor and even as all educators, a lot of our job is to unpack and understand kids stories. And um, so when we think about, you know, trying to understand and, and, and put ourselves maybe in their shoes a little bit um, to try to get, um, you know, a little bit more on their level to kind of get what that world is like that they exist in. Um, I really felt like, um, you know, that's what I do all day long is to, is to try to, um, you know, help them, um, kind of uncover their own story. And then some of the work that I've done in the last couple of years is helping them to amplify their story. So whether it's through a podcast, uh, like the one we talked about earlier, or through writing or just through, um, you know, day to day, uh, life and speaking, um, as a counselor or even as just a general educator, if I can get them to come to terms with their own story and share that, not just with me, but the world, um, that really empowers them. And so this song really reminds me that we all have a story um, and it's worth, you know, getting to know. One of the things that's great about your podcast right now is you're creating a platform where you tell other people's stories. And, and that's a pretty, that's a pretty amazing 
you know, gift. And, and so I've enjoyed being able to do that with our students. You know, not only are they telling their own stories um, through reflections and, and things, but they're able to highlight other people's inspiring stories. And as you were saying earlier, just that idea of learning how to listen at a really deep level and connect with somebody is such a powerful gift. It is. And and the years that I have been in education, I, I understand the value of story in a way that I don't think I used to. And the idea that children at any age, <laughs> people can own their stories um, and be able to find different mediums for sharing their stories, that this is the human connection. And it's so important that we give students opportunities to own their narrative and if we don't let them tell it, if we don't give them places where they can see and be themselves in school, then they'll never be able to reflect on who they are or what their story is. But if they can, and if we give them that platform, then owning their story can also help them write their story and that next chapter. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. And that's, isn't that what education and learning is, is really helping them to write that next chapter. I love that. I, I'm... It's funny, when I first heard this song, I thought it was autobiographical because she sounds like she's telling her story. And then I learned that it was actually, you know, they're, they're a, a band of three and it was, I can't remember if it was Pat or Tim, Phil, maybe? I can't even remember. I was reading about it earlier in the week, had written the lyrics for this. I think I think it was Phil. They're brothers, Tim and Phil um, Hanseroth. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting when people can tell other people's stories, but it feels so authentic. And I think that only music can really do that sometimes or the arts, right? If I think about how I'm not really telling anybody else's story, I'm just giving people a place to tell their own story, kind of what I do in my job and I believe is my job. But this song is really an interesting story that, that has like all of the different roots of all of their music all in one. It was, I'd, I'd never heard it. So I'm really grateful that you brought it to my attention and I love how you waved it into education. Awesome. So let's play it. The story, Brandy Carlisle. All of these lands across my face tell you the story. stories of where I've been And now I got to where I am But these stories don't mean anything When you've got no one to tell them to It's true I was made for I climbed across the mountain tops, swam all across the ocean blue. I crossed over land and I broke all rules. And baby, I broke them all for you. Oh, because even when I was flat broke, you made me feel like a man. songs with me oh i just I, I love all three of those songs i was just stuck on the part at the end there where she talked about um you know these stories don't mean anything if you don't have anyone to tell them to mm-hmm. um man that that just resonates because i think sometimes that's the role of a counselor is to really be there to to listen to those stories right and and to understand them and and uh you know if i can be that person uh for these students sometimes that feel isolated or um 
without someone to tell their, share their stories with, that's, that's just powerful. So. Yeah, it is really powerful. It's, they're very lucky that they have a counselor in the school. We don't, we don't often have that. I haven't had it since the first school that I worked at where we had a designated person and it's so important. And if the students are lucky, they have lots of different teachers that they can go to, but they don't always. So it's, it's wonderful that they have you. Um, Is that, is that typical in in Canada, right? Is it um, not very common to have like a middle school or junior high counselor? So they don't have junior high anymore and middle school happens more often in private or independent schools where I came from. But now that I'm in public school, my experience has been that they do have board wide people that can come in and help, but they have nobody regularly in the school. So we have social workers that can come in and people can see them and get some support but really mm-hmm. the the vice principal and whatever teacher is there become the, the predominant one. But I've seen amazing principals who are there for kids, just tons of educators in sure. the buildings, EAs. We have lots of different kinds of people, but in terms of the role sure. that you have and, and what I've seen in terms of the importance of that role, um, that's not something I get to see very often. Why don't you tell yeah. people how to find uh, the podcast and you? Yeah. So, um, the easiest way to probably find me is on my website, awardwinningculture.com. Um, so the podcast, our student podcast is there. All of our blogs that we're doing are there. Um, as far as connecting with me, um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is probably the best way to get me. And it's just Hans, H A N S, uh, N and then Apple A P P E L. So Hans N Apple. That's probably the best way to get me. Uh, if you want to follow our uh, specific student podcast, um, Twitter is the AWC podcasting. So we've got students tweeting stuff out all the time about what they're doing and who they're interviewing. And uh, it's super fun. I'm I'm really going to start listening, actually, and I'm going to get my students to start listening. I did a podcasting like elective last year with a few students, but oh, so cool. it was cool. But I, I would love to explore this as a possibility. And it's great to have a mentor text from you. So we have a few that I've listened to from some friends of mine, some really great ones, but I always like to hear, I like to hear the kids and I, I love what you're talking about. I love that you're amplifying voices and I really appreciate you coming out to the show. Is there anything? Oh, it's been oh yeah. Okay. Me too. Yeah, it's been a blast. Absolutely. Super well, fun. Is there anything you want to add before I play you out? I don't think so. I think you hit it all. Yeah, I just really appreciate the opportunity. Well, it's just, it's groovy to be able to celebrate people doing great work. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your music. And thank you for your story. (laughs) You too. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on the P3, the personal playlist podcast. I'm Noah Daniel. This is Voice Ed Radio. And I hope you have a fantastic day. 